doing? Hi. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> there. I am still getting set up in my new place as you can tell, but for right now I have a mishmash of random things that might go on my wall. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm recovering from some dental surgery that I had yesterday, so this will be a quick video. I'm actually doing this in lieu of writing because I my pain is like too high to sit in front of the computer even though i'm sitting in front of the computer right now i am trying i'm trying to get into the mode because i have so much to do <laughs> i wasn't planning on having a huge cavity yesterday debacle thing and now there's a huge hole in my tooth that's cool i wanted to apologize um for my non-binary video in it there were a few things i said that could have come across as transphobic or did come across as transphobic to a few people um, and that was not my intention at all. I think I was just rambling and maybe not being as articulate as possible, which still might be true for this video. So I apologize in advance <laughs> if I fuck this up too. But, um, you know, basically I, for the they, them pronouns, um, they, them, you know, when you use them, they are, uh, it, it's a singular pronoun. It's not plural. Um, I did mention how I am sometimes uncomfortable with the idea of thinking of myself in pluralities, and I did associate that with that pronoun. Um, so I'm sorry for uh, if that came across as um, transphobic or if that hurt anybody. A few people reached out to me about it, actually. And I super appreciate, by the way, when anyone reaches out to me if I've said or done anything problematic or that was hurtful, I will be the first person to apologize and admit I'm wrong. So, apologies. Super didn't mean to come across that way. It's not what I think at all. Um, they, them pronouns are very valid, as is androgyny, as is being fudge. Those are just not things that I, um, that I adhere to or associate with my personal gender identity, I should say. I, just a few random thoughts. Number one, this week, um, I realized that, <laughs> I guess I knew this before, but working at home as a freelancer, um, it, it's easier to be depressed, to fall into a type of depression or anxiety. Um, you're, in, I'm not forced to like socialize with people in the world, so I can, like basically I'm not struggling against something that's stopping me from feeling feelings you know, and expressing them all day long um, in the same way I would in an office environment or a retail environment or, you know, at a restaurant or whatever job, um, you know, because when you're around people and you're in public, you can't cry all day, right? So, but, but at home, you can. <laughs> so, uh, not that I've been crying all day every day, but it has been definitely a rough week. Um, and I've experienced some rough weeks in the past year, and I've just been more susceptible to sometimes allowing myself to kind of feel that at its intensity, um, which I think is both good and bad. Like it allows me to process it in the time that I need to process it instead of ignoring it where I had a different place. But it also makes me more susceptible to having those feelings and for them to be stronger. Um, so I, I know that this is a thing that a lot of freelancers that work at home have talked about and expressed. And even YouTubers talk about this, how it's like the loneliest job um, you know, on the planet, which isn't 100% true, it's a little dramatic, but it is, it is mostly true. If you're working by yourself at home um, and you're not surrounded necessarily by people in the physical world, but you are inundated with um, you know, critique or opinions or pressure from kind of the digital masses, it is a unique and weird experience. Um, I don't necessarily feel that from YouTube, but I do feel it from writing um, at home all day. So uh, that's been rough to realize and empathy for people who kind of are more prone to depression and anxiety than I am. I am, I, I think, I personally think that I am minimally uh, prone to it. I don't ha uh, have extreme um, mood fluctuations that I can't manage, I guess is how I should say it. Um, and I'm not on any uh, drugs to help manage it chemically. Um, 
and so I don't think it affects me maybe as much as it affects other people and so I have I have empathy for people who do struggle with that and gosh feeling it it's hard to work also through illness um, or any kind of setbacks so you know depression plus setbacks uh, with um, uh, w physical issues and pain, d dental surgery, <laughs> like just one thing after another, right? Uh, can feel kind of overwhelming. How do I catch up uh, when I'm struggling through this stuff? And the answer is just sometimes I have to power through um, just to get things done. And that's hard. I can't, I can't put stuff off or hit a different deadline or have someone else to support me, I am my only support. Um, so that's that's difficult, you know, even though I have been struggling this week or in past weeks when I have been struggling too, you just gotta, just gotta do stuff. Freelance life, <laughs> the sad parts. There's good parts too. These, these are some of the sad hard parts. Uh, also, I just wanted to share, I, I made a list for a friend recently of some YouTube channels that have been inspiring me um, and I thought they might inspire you all as well. Maybe that'd be something cool for you to watch. I, I mentioned ContraPoints in my last video. I love her. Her videos are great. Um, Lindsay Ellis is always fantastic. These two, they kind of put videos out um, maybe once a month um, because they're such high production and they take a while to make, but they're great. Two great women you can support by watching on YouTube. Um, I've been obsessed with the Do Not Eat One videos recently on City Skylines and talking about uh, how they relate to capitalism and industry and labor. Super cool. Also, um, he's from Philly and I'm from Philly and it's cool to see a weird alternate Philly history. Um, I like uh, Folding Ideas. He talks mostly about film criticism. Oh, and that's what Lindsay Ellis does too. Um, ContraPoints talks about like philosophy and gender and um, another great person to watch for philosophy is Philosophy Tube. Um, H Bomber Guy is hilarious and fantastic and does video game analysis and other things that are weird. Um, the Princess and the Scrivener is a new film uh, person I've been following. I, I think it's two people actually, um, two, uh, two queer, queer women. And they, uh, or they might be non-binary, I'm sorry, I don't know. And they um, talk about uh, films that I wouldn't really be interested in, but am interested in because they talk about them. Kind of like Lindsay Ellis's Disney stuff, like I don't really watch Disney. Uh, Princess and the Scrivener does stuff like that. Um, Superwoman and Superwoman vlogs. I actually like her vlog better than her comedy sketches. She's like the richest woman person on YouTube. And um, she's just really cool. Um, Indian and American, I think. And she just does a vlog every day about all the stuff that she does. And she's hilarious and energetic. And I like watching it just to kind of keep me company. Um, vlog Brothers is great. I actually didn't know about, I think it's Hank Green. <laughs> I, I think they're famous in the podcasting world, but um, I didn't know about them. And I just started watching their vlog channel because they were talking about the Anthropocene, which I was obsessed with over the summer and still am I'm making a game about it, right? Um, but they, uh, they do, they do vlogs kind of like every other day and the channel is pretty cool. They're really quick, like three minute things about whatever topic they're thinking about. <laughs> Nick Spears is fantastic. Um, May talks about um, horror mostly, like horror film analysis. And it's hilarious and great and has some trans narratives. Um, Riley J. Dennis is a uh, non-binary and they just moved to Australia and talks about like social issues and also video games. Uh, Mikey the Macaw is uh, two people who live in England and they have a macaw parrot and it's really cute kind of watching their journey with the parrot. There are also short videos, but the parrot is beautiful and it talks kind of about how to take care of birds. I follow a whole lot of pet YouTubers that you probably all don't care about, but if you wanna know, I will tell you all the snake channels I follow too. <laughs>
Uh, the Maven of the Eventide is ridiculous and amazing. She does vampire fiction, movie, novel, whatever reviews, and they're great. Uh, they're just super entertaining and educational. She talks about like historical context of vampire stuff. Um, Laron Reedus does regular kind of cultural movie nerd review things that are super cool. Um, Let's see, who else? Connie Glenn is a new person I started following. I guess she also used to do some Disney stuff, um, but has gotten into kind of um, like anthropological analysis of YouTube and other cultural things, which I think is really awesome. So there's a list for now, but I made my subscription list public, which I didn't realize I could do. So you can actually go check that out if you go to my channel and then go look under channels. That's where they all are. Thanks for listening to this rant. Please like and subscribe. I have some videos that I wanted to make today and next week, but if pain continues, I probably won't be able to focus too much. It might be more of a rant. Um, I want to make a video on writing uh, role-playing game scenarios because I'm doing a lot of that right now, and it's super hard and time-consuming, actually, um, to the point where I think it's it would be interesting to talk about like the process of it and how I, I do it with various uh, role-playing game companies and people, you know, and how it's, how it's easy and how it's hard and like all, all of that. Um, and what was the other one I wanted to make? I don't remember now. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for watching my vids. See you next time.